Tom Osborne took Nebraska football to the highest level. Many ways he transformed how people judge success in college football. His drive to transform continues away from the game. Teammates now includes 135 chapters across Nebraska and Iowa. Wow, it just keeps growing. Always great to have the man behind the organization here, Tom Osborne. Good to see you, Hi, Coach. Hi, Coach. Well, Welcome thank back. You. Thank you. It's good to be here. Stopping by. I know you've been busy and you've done some fishing this summer. We just talked about <laughs> yeah. your trip to Alaska. Yeah. Uh, but would you take us back for a second and talk about uh, why you and Nancy started teammates for kind of people that mm -hmm. aren't familiar with the story? Well, we, um, I guess over 36 years of coaching, I saw a lot of changes, uh, primarily in the family structure. More and more kids that were fatherless, uh, single parent families. And then um, the drug culture hit and uh, a little more violence. And um, so I saw a lot of changes. I was spending more and more time on personal issues and less and less time on X's and O's mm. and practice schedules. And um, so one day Nancy suggested that maybe we try to do something. And uh, so I asked some of our players if they would serve as a mentor mm -hmm. for some seventh or eighth grade boys in Lincoln. And um, 22 hands went up and we, ma we matched them up. And uh, as those kids got to be seniors in high school, we found that of the 22, 21 graduated on time, wow. mm -hmm. and um, about 18 of them went on to college, and uh, that far exceeded our expectations. Mm -hmm. So we expanded the program, and today we're mentoring about 8,000 kids in 135 communities, and mm -hmm. uh, probably 95% of those kids are in Nebraska, mm -hmm. roughly 1,500, 1,600 here in greater Omaha. But uh, we always have way more kids on a waiting list than we have mentors. Mm -hmm. So. One of the things that I do today that is, takes most of my time is simply try to recruit mentors. Mm -hmm. So uh, teammates is school-based. So it's um, 35, 40, 45 minutes a week in a school setting mm -hmm. and uh, pretty simple. The, the time aspect is one of the, the things I'm sure you hear a lot. People say, mm -hmm. I'd love to be a mentor. I understand why it's important, but I don't think I have the time. How do you address that argument and compel those folks to give it a shot? Mm -hmm. Well, most everybody eats lunch somewhere. So I go eat lunch with my mentee, and it takes 35, 40 minutes. And uh, I'm back at my work within an hour. Pretty simple. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you like to play golf, you're going to find three, four hours a week to play golf. If you like to play bridge, you're going to find three, four hours. So I, I always find that uh, that's probably a fairly hollow argument. Mm -hmm. And uh, even when I spend some time in that evil place called Washington, D.C., <laughs> I still mentored. I would see my mentee before I got on a plane Monday morning or when I got off the plane on Friday. Yeah. And so uh, we have all kinds of professional people, doctors, uh, lawyers, school teachers who are very busy people mm -hmm. who mentor. You know, you're not only helping run teammates, but you also, like you said, you still mentor. Mm -hmm. um, so how have you seen lives change? Any specific stories on somebody that you feel like Man, we really, this, we made a big impact in this kid's life. Well, um, probably because of confidentiality, you don't mm -hmm. want to disclose mm -hmm. personal sure, stories, sure. But, but there are, are uh, hundreds and thousands of them out there. The uh, average teammate mentee uh, graduates at a rate of about uh, 89%. And those kids, uh, most of them are free and reduced lunch. Most of them, uh, uh, single parent families mm -hmm. and that demographic would probably graduate at about a 65 70 percent rate and so uh, when you can improve graduation rates when there's less substance abuse when school attendance gets better and uh, Gallup tracked our matches for a period mm -hmm. of five years and so there's a there's a great deal of objective uh, information that indicates that it does work and it's mm -hmm. very powerful and it's multi-generational because if you can change a young person's life from going maybe a little bit off the rails to one that's constructive, to living a good life. You'll not just affect that one person, you'll affect that person's family, mm -hmm. their children, the people they work with, the occupation they're in, the amount of education that they obtain. And, uh, and of course, uh, that ripple effect goes on from one generation to the next. And I think it's the best way that I know to transform society. Mm -hmm. So we think it's very powerful and very important particularly in this day and age. There is a need, and so we'll direct our viewers to your website. You can 
Sign up there at teammates.org. 43 days now to the start of the college football season, Coach. Mm -hmm. Last year was an interesting one for the University of Nebraska. <laughs> a couple of close losses, mm -hmm. a, a tough one for uh, Coach Riley. What were your thoughts uh, last season as a lot of fans were fired up over the results of those games? And I heard you speak about patience on a couple of occasions. Mm -hmm. What can they do now in Lincoln to, to learn lessons from that and apply them here to this upcoming season? Well, you know, when, once you're out of coaching, <clears throat> you realize that if you're not on the practice field every day and if you're not in that meeting room and you don't know the injury report and you don't know your players, you're, you're not in a very good position to offer advice. And so, I know a lot of sports writers <laughs> would argue with that on that. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, there's, yeah, there's about 1.8 million people in the state that have ideas. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So um, hopefully it'll go well and, uh, you know, uh, have an experienced quarterback, and that's always a good place to start. Mm -hmm. And um, and I think they've got some good skill players, and and uh, did lose some good defensive linemen. But we'll just have to see how it all plays out. And yep. Hopefully, it'll uh, be a good year. Yeah, I think so. I uh, have you got a chance to get to know Coach Riley a little bit more since he's been here last year? Not year? real well. We we met uh, one time for lunch, and we've uh, shaken hands a few times. And mm -hmm. of course, I've watched him and. Uh, and uh, got to know him that way, but really haven't spent much time together. But mm -hmm. um, seemed like a very nice person, mm -hmm. and certainly a person that has quite a extensive football background. He's been at it for uh, a long, long time, and so I don't think there's any advice I can give him that would be <laughs> very helpful at this well, point. Well, you already did. He said he's read all your books. That's so right. <laughs> well, that was what I, I think when when, yeah. all, when fans heard that, if we didn't know anything else about him early on, yeah. but we knew that, we were like, okay, we're we're in. We can buy this. Um, before you go, I want to emphasize teammates again because at mm -hmm. this point, this is uh, a priority for you indeed, but to really see change in. Nebraska and Iowa, and maybe you've heard about teammates, you've thought about becoming a mentor, call 390-8326 or log on to teammates.org to learn more about the organization. Coach, great, great seeing you. Thanks for stopping by. Well, thank by. you guys for having me thank on. You. I appreciate it very much. You As do we. You Thank best. you. Well, the